Welcome to the Marketing Elite Show. I'm Jeff C. And we are so excited to have you here with us today. Um, I am Jeff C. from Mailing Pinterest Tips, and I'm here with my awesome co-host, Elisa Meredith. And we'll be joined later by Back by Popular Man, uh, our, our special guest, Justine Gab. She's visual designer at Tailwind, and she's going to do mm -hmm. another pin makeover. So you want to make sure you stick around. Uh, we've got some really yes. cool stuff to talk about today. Uh, we are so happy to have you all on. As we are going around today, dropping all these knowledge bombs, because Elisa does that all the time, um, <laughs> we'd love for you to drop in. If you hear something really spectacular that she says, do hashtag Tailwind Tips, and you could win one of these awesome selfie lights from Tailwind. They're exclusive at Tailwind. You can't get them anywhere else. Can't go down to your local five and dime and get one. You can only get them here on the show. Uh, last week's winner was Pamela Burke Drager. So Pamela Burke Drager, if you're here today, make sure you let us know in the comments so we can actually get this selfie light to you. And we're, uh, we would love to do that with somebody else today as we go along. So uh, let us know where all you're, you're from, you know, any questions you have, we will try to pull them up today during the show. So make sure you drop those down below. But I want to make sure that you guys all know about this special Pinterest toolkit that Tailwind has put together. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. They're coming out with new templates every month, correct, Elisa? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. and I suspect there's gonna, there are going to be some bonus um, versions in there as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So they're yeah. very cool because we're talking, you know, you may hear us talking about, you know, coming up with new pins quite a bit. And this is a great mm -hmm. place to start. It's a great resource to have. You can take them. You can modify them. You can have some place to start if you're like struggling. Oh, my gosh, what do I do? How can I create yeah. some new pins for my blog post or my product? This is awesome to stop to start with. It's got uh, uh, Photoshop files in there. And what other kind of files? Actually, it's just Canva. We, oh, we just Canva. moved to just Canva to keep it real simple. So you'll be able to add the templates to your own account and do whatever you want with them. Um, something I, I liked is that we went, we took the best practices that Pinterest has published most recently, and we incorporated all of those elements. Um, and I tried some things that I hadn't done before, uh -oh. like like <laughs> I know you got to go check it out, right? right. Um, <laughs> like using feature callouts. Uh, which I had never tried before. So I think Pinterest example was like on a car, you might do like a little dot with a line and say, oh, how many cylinders or, or whatever we talk about with cars. Um, but just some different elements that, that they say have been working. And uh, so, yeah, just a way to spice things up a little bit. I think we all get into a rut, need something yeah, new. And it's, all, it's great to have free templates. I mean, that's awesome. Free. So for you guys listening uh, on our podcast or on a different network, go to bit.ly forward slash TW Pinterest Toolkit. That's bit.ly forward slash TW Pinterest Toolkit to download that. Uh, that's all lowercase, all smashed together. Um, go download <laughs> that today because um, I'm sure they're going to be dropping some new ones in for the months almost over. Uh, yeah, you know. it won't be long. Yeah, it's pretty yeah cool. and so, every month we'll let you we'll let you know. Oh, there's a new collection. Come back and look. Grab the new ones. Very so. cool. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I do want to bring up some comments because this yeah. is just funny from our, our good friend, uh, Kristen, over at Tailwind. She goes... Uh, just dropping in and say yes and that <laughs> lipstick. So you've got a fan. Thanks, Kristen. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. Uh, Miss talking to you. But uh, yeah, so uh, very, very cool. So yeah, that's not really a tailwind tip, but it's close. So, um, but she <laughs> Yeah, and you know what, these. you guys? You can make up your own tailwind tips. Right. Yeah, if you have yeah. something that you found that's yeah. working, we would love to know about that uh, and let us know uh, down below. And uh, you know what, what? Also, we would love for you guys to sprinkle the love across the interwebs. If you uh, find something here that you really like, you know, sh sprinkle the love. <laughs> Go out there. I'm trying not to say the word because I know, I like know. That. But I know. But anyway, we are talking today all about um, keywords, which keywords. doesn't sound really too sexy, you but know, you made it with, you said the magical power of Pinterest keyword research in the title, which I is figured, pretty incredible. So, um, yeah, I figured we had to spice it up a little bit, but then I was looking at the comments on the, on the video before mm -hmm. we went live and there were people were really excited about this. So, yeah. so yeah, I think it's exciting. Well, I also want to bring up this um, comment from one of our friends yeah. watching over on YouTube. Yes, we simulcast this over on YouTube at the same time. Uh, Sandra goes, hello, guys. Just want to thank you for all the information you are giving us for free. That's amazing. Thanks to my fin, uh, friend Trip Jonal 
for introducing me to Tailwind and Pinterest. Well, we are so glad that you are here, Sandra. Make yeah. sure to ask your well, questions if we, if we, uh, sometimes we go a little fast. We get a little excited about Pinterest and Tailwind, <laughs> and sometimes you, you just kind of need to slow us down and ask those yeah. questions, and we'll try to bring them up. Oh, and you you were teasing the Justine design segment, but we also have a new little feature at Tailwind, which you may not have noticed. It's mm. brand new, and we didn't like announce it. This is but we're going to cool. show it to you here. Yeah. So have we, you looked at it? I have. I played with it. I've got it ready to come up on screen for all of us to see. But we'll, let's let's dive right, in let's a little bit first. into like yeah, yeah, our yeah. our topic because. Um, yeah. I want to break it. I want to like start like at the very, very beginning and say, okay, uh -huh. SEO. Some people may not know what SEO is. So let's just oh. get that out of the way. What does SEO stand for? I mean, uh, big world picture search engine optimization. Right. So when we talk about SEO for Pinterest, why is this important and why do we need to talk about it? It's super important because because Pinterest is a visual, visual search and discovery engine. So for that search part, you really need to make sure that you have your keywords selected properly and that you're using them in the right places and keeping consistency in the right places, which we can go into a little bit as well. But we've done that in the past, and I really want to dive into, well, how do you know what are the best keywords? Yeah, I don't know. How are yeah. the best? What are the best keywords? <laughs> well, you want the, the top 10? Yes, I, I can't give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no such thing. So, um, well, the easiest way and probably the most dependable way to to just get your keywords is you probably I'm guessing if you know if you've been in in digital marketing for any length of time, you probably have your Google keyword list. Now, your Pinterest keyword list is going to be different. If you don't have a list just go with what you think. Like, what do you think people are searching? Um, if you're starting with your Google list, you're going to Pinterestify it a little bit, right? So, so whereas on Google, people are searching with a different kind of intent. So they may search for something like um, Mark Jacobs dress shirt. Right? right on Pinterest, the mindset is is a little bit different. So they might search for something like what to wear to a spring wedding. Mm. Right? See, so you have to shift the mindset or your keywords are not going to work. So let's go with that example, which I just pulled out of nowhere and I hope it doesn't come back to bite me. <laughs> uh, and there goes my cat. Um, but let's say we're looking for a spring wedding. We're, we're thinking that might be something people would search in connection with my product. So spring, wedding. I'm typing this directly into the Pinterest search bar right now. Mm -hmm. You're on desktop. So what, so, yeah. yeah, on desktop. That's the way to do it. Um, and what I'm seeing for suggestions underneath my term would be spring wedding colors, spring wedding ideas, spring wedding dress, spring color schemes, flowers, guest dresses, decorations. So I'm going to pull out of that short list anything that might work. So spring wedding colors, ideas, color schemes, all those things could work with my my shirt that could be worn to a spring wedding, right? So you can see how even like with one item you want to advertise or or promote on Pinterest, you could go down 15 different rabbit holes. Mm -hmm. And it's it's pretty fun, but you have to put yourself in the mindset of a pinner in all the different ways and all the different reasons they could be searching for your product or your idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to so choose. I, I, huh? I want to I want to stop you and ask you a question. So okay, stop me. You kind of that was kind of a broad keyword that you put in there. Yeah. So it was kind of like you know what spring weddings is what you kind of said. Is that mm -hmm, where you want wedding. to start? Because are are you? And I think it's important that we get inside the mindset of the yeah. searcher. We kind of like we are nerdy marketers and we're like, oh, yeah. you know, and we try to kind of overthink some things. So what do you suggest for people when they're first getting started, like when they're trying to even do uh, keyword research on Pinterest? Should they start that broad? Um, I think you could do it a couple different ways. So okay. if somebody wants to give me an example and we can start from there rather than me making something up that it's not really going to help anybody, I'm happy to take an example. Um, but until we get one, if you, if you type in spring wedding and you just, you click on spring wedding, what you get underneath the search bar are a bunch of tiles. And I know we've talked about them before. It's, mm -hmm. it's, um, guided search, right? right? So you could look at 
spring wedding ideas, spring wedding guest themes. These are all things that Pinterest is saying, all right, in connection with spring wedding, this is what people are searching. So here I'm kind of learning that even though my Marc Jacobs men's dress shirt could be great at a spring wedding, I'm not seeing a great fit here mm -hmm. gotcha. <laughs> for, for keywords, right? So um, I may check out guest. But in general, like I've seen people say, oh, those tiles, like the first one on the left, that's the one that's most searched going down to the right. Not true, because if you do it on two in two different accounts, you'll get completely different results. So there, there doesn't seem to be any hierarchy to like, here's the most search and here's the least. Right. Um, but just these are just giving you ideas that, that people are actually searching on Pinterest. So I'm going to click through. I think we're hitting a dead end with this well, here's, particular Well, here's, here's a good one I want to bring up okay, from... Um, this is kind of the same uh, thing, but it may be a little bit more specific. Okay. It's from Vicky, and she goes, destination weddings. So uh, so she has a destination wedding. Like search. Maybe like if somebody's going to Pinterest, and they're like, I want to do a destination wedding. So that's what. Um, okay. You know, okay. Think, well, so you're me. hoping to be found for that term, like destination right. wedding. Okay, gotcha. So if I search that, I'm going to get destination wedding. I, and that plus ideas, locations, invitations, welcome bags, dress, all inclusive favors. So now we have a short list mm -hmm. of keywords. I'm going to dive into destination wedding ideas because the term ideas works with almost any small, like short keyword um, on Pinterest. So let's click on and, that. And ideas is a big, I mean, that's, that's why people go to Pinterest is to get ideas. <laughs> so that's, exactly. I mean, that's why it works yeah. is because so, they're going there like, for that. Yeah, exactly. So pair that with any shorter keyword that you have and, and you'll get some results. But what, okay, so now what I'm getting for tiles for the guided search suggestions would be locations. All inclusive again pops up. So those two right there were popping up in both places. I think that's a pretty good indication that if they apply to you, and they probably do in some, some uh, shape or fashion, use those. We've got beach, Cabo, on a budget. There's another good one, right? Especially for a blog post, mm -hmm. mountains, small decorations. Okay, so we've got the search results. You also kind of want to look at the results that are showing up in that search. Now, here's another funny SEO myth. I've heard people say, oh, my pin is ranking number one for keyword search, blah, blah, blah. It's not. <laughs> I mean, it'd be awesome if it worked like that. Like you go into incognito mode like you can in Google and say, like, without a doubt, my pin is number one for this search. It's not the way it works because um, Pinterest is so big into helping you discover. So they use a ton of different factors to help decide what goes where in a certain person's feed. So it, you may see it number one on one account, but I may not even see it at all. It's just kind of there's a lot that goes behind it gotcha. but you can definitely look at the pins that show up for that so i'm seeing um destination wedding etiquette and tips affordable destination wedding hacks mistakes to avoid when planning your destination wedding so you're you're now getting all of these keyword ideas that you can use mm -hmm. on pinterest yeah i like that uh, one that one that one's yeah. to me. Hacks, yes. You know, I mean, <laughs> no just, doubt. Uh, I mean, so, I, I, and so. I think people love hacks. Yeah. So you're getting these. Where would you start? I mean, how would you go now? Okay, I've gotten kind of these lists. Yeah. Would you start creating pins and start testing to see what's working? So what's your, what would be your next step on this? Yeah. So I would use, make sure that the ones I think are really going to work are in my, my pin titles, my pin descriptions, text on image, as well as my board titles and board descriptions and that they're on the content that we're linking to from those places. Gotcha. So we want to have that continuity, and that's like Pinterest SEO in a really tiny little nutshell. Um, but, yeah, so that's kind of the basics, but there, there's more. But wait, there's more. There's so more. Okay. <laughs> you're like, that's good because it's only 14 minutes in. Um, well, I just want to, so, I just want to say everybody, thanks for all your yeah. questions. We're, we're getting, it's going nuts. We're, this is the most oh, popular really? live that we've ever done. So uh, it's oh, pretty wow. incredible. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, so we'll get, we'll try to get your questions in a little bit, but I want to let okay. Lisa kind of go in and kind of do the next steps. Yeah. Okay. So I'm kind of torn as to whether we should go into trends next or if we should go into figuring search volume. What do you think? Well, let's, let's bring up some questions now because I think okay, that's what uh, there's a, t so get ready. Um, I'm, I'm ready. Go ahead and pull some of those up. So um, she, 
So uh, Fuenza says this. Um, uh, do you have any boards featuring the actual uh, venues there? It adds some local SEO features so you can feature your local floral work at that venue. Brides always look for what a wedding looks like at that particular venue. I thought that's a great point to bring up. Um, she's talking about there are some questions about um, a florist in there. Um, and some other questions were really. I so think, let's. Let me try to dig into this yeah, one. So, so you have any boards featuring the actual venues. Um, so are you thinking like I'm a destination wedding and I want my board to show up there? Um, most people are going to search for all pins rather than boards. But if we change destination wedding ideas, search filtering to boards, mm -hmm. um, most of them are pretty general, like destination wedding. Um, that's like every single title is destination wedding. So you would want to include where it is. Like the, I think Cabo showed up. So right. let's just put that one in there. Yeah. And that absolutely the boards are showing up there. So if you're thinking like, could I get my, my pins from my local floral business featured there? Yeah. Maybe you could get them to add your pin there or add you to a group board. Although it's probably better just to have them pin there for you. Um, not sure if that's the essence of that question. I think so. I think, and okay. We're getting them crazy, so I'm trying to keep. Okay, okay, okay So, sorry. so here's on. here's a good question on like when you're when you're building your pins, do you write the keyword as hashtag destination destination wedding ideas, for example? So she's wanting to know, like, kind of how to optimize the hashtags for search in that way. And because here's another okay. follow up question from Linda: Do you put hashtag spring wedding colors, or just separate hashtag swing spring wedding and colors hashtags? Okay, so we're getting into a little slightly different topic. So um, going back to the first question, for key, like for strictly keywords, you're going to spell it out separate words, right? No okay. hashtag, no, not searching hashtag. Um, if you're going to add hashtags, which you definitely can do, uh, I would add the longer tail, so spring wedding colors, because if you think about it, if someone clicked on, on or even searched the hashtag colors, uh, it's the results are not going to be where you want to be. Gotcha. Be too broad and... Gotcha. Not helpful. I, I think there is, yeah. So a lot of times hashtags get lumped in to SEO, and it's really they're yep. really two different things. So uh, they are, but there's there's some crossover, but because they're yeah, I think yeah, yeah, sure. But like be be uh, like longer tail for your, especially for Pinterest hashtags. Gotcha. And this is from our friend Martin. He goes, uh, guided Martin. search helps you and the tabs if you yep. put a keyword, and the second is automatically suggested to take that one. The third one following. Use hashtag tail and tips. So thanks. All right. Martin, yes. One of our first to search. One. Yeah. And this is from Tia. And this was, I think, I want to get a little bit more clarification on this. She goes, should okay. we search using questions or broad topics? For example, best material to, to, to make a, de a dimensional sign out of question mark versus dimensional signs. So hmm. there are two different search intents right there. Right. Okay. So dimensional signs is really broad. Like if I search dimensional signs, I would expect that I would get examples of dimensional signs. I, I wouldn't be thinking and I get any kind of how to. Um, and the other one I think is a little too specific. So I would search. I would think something more like um, how to make a dimensional sign or dimensional sign ideas, dimensional signs, DIY, dimensional sign tips. Um, like kind of in between the two examples right there. What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, I agree. Um, I would make, I think you may have already said this, but because I was reading ahead of the comments. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, but I think that I would test different pins for those. Th you know what I'm saying is. Oh, yeah. Try like, try all three or yeah. four of those. Yeah. yeah. But so, at, um, like best material to make a dimensional sign out of, that's way too, too specific. Uh, if right. you think about like how many people are on Pinterest and that niche of a subject, I would go broader. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting question from Toto. He, uh, they go, he goes, um, if Pinterest is ranking, if Pinterest ranking is different for everyone, why do we care about ranking at all? <laughs> what we do care because it's a combination of factors, right? So we have the SEO and we have the personalized results. So anytime you can give yourself an advantage, you definitely want to do that. And you do want to give Pinterest as much information about your pins so that they can serve them up in the best places for search and in the home feed. But it's not as cut and dry as going on. Like even Google in non-incognito mode um, is personalized to you. 
I think I feel like Pinterest is more personalized and like kind of branches out more from your search than Google mm -hmm. will definitely does. Um, but there is like, there's no incognito mode really. Gotcha. So this leads into the next topic that you were going to talk about. And this is from uh, one of our friends over Tess is watching on YouTube. And I love these questions from new users. She goes, I'm new to Tailwind. Mm -hmm. Is there an SEO finder within, or is it just the hashtag helper for Pinterest ones? She hopes that makes sense. Okay, so someone was asking about this recently. Like, the only place right now where you can find um, you can find hashtag suggestions and hashtag use counts is on mobile, as far as I can tell. So you have to actually go in, create a pin on mobile, and start typing your hashtag, and it will give you like how many uses it's had and and other related suggestions. But the other part of that question, oh. SEO, like an SEO finder or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are a couple of things. And the first one I want to talk about is within the Pinterest ads platform. Right. So if you if you just go into Pinterest, um, you got to have a business account, but hopefully we all do anyway because we're using Pinterest for marketing. Right. And you're going to just go um, under the ads tab and hit create ad. And it, it's even easier now than it used to be. So you don't even have to enter anything. Just go right down to the targeting link and you're going to see uh, things like audiences, interests, skip down from there to the keyword section. There's a little box under where it says extend your reach and you can search for related keywords. So I'm going to put in destination wedding. All right. Destination wedding ideas. Like there's a whole list that shows up of, of related topics. So let's go with the first one, destination wedding ideas. It's telling me here there are 5 million monthly searches for that particular string of keywords. Um, I, I take these with a little bit of a grain of salt, but we're going to look at, we're going to click on the little plus sign. It's going to add it to our targeting or imaginary ad. Um, and then over on the right, you get a potential audience size. So what I'm seeing here, okay, Pinterest is saying there are 5 million monthly searches. And in this screen here, it's telling me that the potential audience size, if I just use that keyword, would be like 536,000 to 725,000. So that's a, like a pretty good indication of keyword search volume. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to try another one. I will try destination wedding planning. Again, 5 million searches. If I click on that one, my audience size is 284,000 to 384,000. So a little bit smaller, but still really good. So this is kind of a back end, um, I don't want to say a trick, but a back end tool that you <laughs> right. can use. Like yeah. we don't do tricks here, but yeah. um, it's a tool that you can use to figure out what is the actual monthly search? Because that guided search is amazing. That kind of autofill search is amazing, but it doesn't give you, it's like, yes, people are searching, but is it 10 searches a month? Or is it 5 million? Gotcha. And this speaking is of amazing, like, I love this. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of amazing, don't forget for everybody to download. If you're struggling, we're talking about, you know, maybe trying out some new pins, trying out some new things or to test a different, you know, SEO and, you know, what keywords mm -hmm. are actually working. Here's a great place to start. If you go to Tailwind, go to bit.ly forward slash TW Pinterest Toolkit, you'll be able to download this totally free awesome Canva templates to start creating your own pins. Maybe you're struggling with like, I don't like doing this from scratch. I don't know what to do. We have some <laughs> great ones here. So go to bit.ly forward slash TW Pinterest toolkit to download that today. So it's very cool. Now, yeah. another tool that yeah. is exciting and this unfortunately is only for the U S uh, it's one I know you were waiting for forever to get your little mitts on, and so was I, and now we have it. It's pretty cool. Yes. So talk about this new trends tool. Okay, so it's uh, if you have access to it, and like Jeff said, it seems to be only in the U.S. right now, but it's trends.pinterest.com, and you'll be able to search what people are, are looking for. So let us go into a destination wedding. Uh, and when I just type that into the search bar, even before I hit enter, it's also giving me other terms, related terms. So I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind. Um, the other thing I see on this screen is a little graph. So I see it's up high and then a real dip and then up again. So I'm going to click through and see like what, what does that mean? So what we're looking at is searches over time. 
And it's a scale of 1 to 100, which means that we're not looking at a, a number of searches or an overall popularity of the term. What we're looking at is when does interest in that term peak? So for this one, I see the very highest point was June 4th, 2019. So what does that tell me? It tells me that I should be pinning a lot <laughs> leading up to that time <laughs> yeah. because people are searching for it. Um, there's another peak in July. It really falls off around holiday time, comes back up again first week of January. So that is super helpful to see like seasonality. What should you be writing about? What should you be pinning? Beneath that, there are related terms like destination wedding ideas, destination wedding invitations. I can click on any of those and it will add that term to the graph so I can compare them over time. I can see where that interest peaks and where it, where it wanes. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see that it looks like destination wedding is a much bigger term than destination wedding ideas. So you can go after both of them, but know that even though the trend is very similar, destination wedding is is a, obviously a bigger keyword. And then you can actually see popular pins based on the search terms. So I'm seeing what you see when you go after destination wedding versus destination wedding ideas. Mm. Um, so a way that I found to use this was thinking about a couple of really popular diets. Um, so the keto diet and the Atkins diet. If I were thinking about like, what do I want? How do I want to target these pins? Do I want to go after keto? Do I want to go after Atkins? Well, it might be that keto peaks in November and Atkins peaks in July. So maybe in July, I should be talking more about Atkins. In November, I should be talking more about keto. Mm, um, yeah, like just to, to really work those trends, trends and seasonality in, that is uh, like a superpower of this um I, I do want to say the key is not to try to like if I have a blog post on chicken recipes and it's not keto, I'm not trying to s stuff it into a place where it's not supposed to be. It's not saying, oh, how can I capitalize if I have a blog post on, you know, how to use Instagram? I'm not going to try to put it into keto diet somehow. <laughs> I hope you know what not. I mean? That's not well. But I mean, I know some people have thought they're like, oh, how can I capitalize on this trend because it's super oh, no, popular? You, can't. you have and to find so, your own. <laughs> right, yeah, it has to make sense to go in the trend. Yeah. But it's still very, very popular. Like you said, looking at seasonality and what's working, if it can go in two different categories because keto and Atkins are all both low carb and it makes sense, then mm -hmm. this is huge. This is a big deal. This is huge. And it's more than just like having two similar but different diets. It's like two similar but different keywords, right? So even if it's the same exact post, the same exact idea, it's like, which one should I be focusing on at what time? And then if you want to bring that search volume in, um, you can absolutely look at, like go back to that um, advertising tool to the targeting section and put mm -hmm. in, like what's the difference between keto and um, ke like keto diet and Atkins diet? what would the, the difference in the search volume be and the difference in the, um, the potential audience size. It's huge, by the way. <laughs> the right. difference is yeah. huge. Keto is way more popular than Atkins, but on the other hand, um, maybe you want to go with Atkins because there's still a decent amount of search uh, and a lot less competition. So it's kind of like with, with um, Google search, like you got to find that balance of the competition and the search volume and decide what to go after. Then you add seasonality and you can have a winner. Right. And so I want to bring up that uh, URL. Thank you, Lorena, for oh, putting thanks. that up. Yeah. Trends.pinterest.com. That's where you can go see if you have access to that. Um, it took us a while. Like I got it. Did I get it before you? I think I did. Yeah, that was awesome. I always get nice things. So, um, yeah. So um, speaking of some cool new tools, other than, you know, this at trends.pinterest.com, we have mm -hmm. our own very cool tool that we're going to yes. walk you guys through from Tailwind. So are you ready for that, Alisa? I am. Are you, okay. are you ready to show us? I will pull it up. Just give me a second okay. to pull yeah. that up. And I will. So I want you to tell us what we are actually seeing. What in the world is this? This is our real-time top pins report which I am very excited about. Um, Job over at Tailwind has been working on that for a while and we've added some new features and it's just very exciting. So, so the way to get to it is over on, yes, 
there. It's, it's right underneath <laughs> insights. insights. Yeah. Yeah, top pins. So what we have is we have um, pins from, it's showing, oh, I should go back just a moment. Everyone can see this if you have a verified domain on Pinterest. If you don't, if you haven't done that, you need to anyway. <laughs> but if you go in to try to find this report, you're going to get a, a red warning or you'll be redirected. So what this is doing is it shows you top pins by clicks and saves as well as click through rates and save rates for up to a 30 day, like a rolling time period. Um, something that I have to admit I completely missed <laughs> is that you can hover over the pin uh, and can you, yeah, and see a whole bunch of information, That's including, cool. yeah, yeah, like when it was pinned and all that. And good why didn't stuff. you put a title on this? I can't imagine. <laughs> I just wonder What's why. wrong with me? It's, it's like, it yeah. was, yeah, well, it was in June. Yeah, so, so we'll see if there's another one. <laughs> Besides, I didn't pin it. Look at that. Oh, see, yeah, yeah. You it's look somebody, somebody else. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now you, on the, here's one that you pinned. There it is. You have the title. There, there it is. And that was, was more recent, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. So you can also hover over the pinner and see, like, who is this person that is so kindly sending me all yeah, these? Yeah, which clips. I thought was very, very cool. So, yeah, you <laughs> can view their profile. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you can sort it too, right? So you can you can um, look at seven days, fourteen days, or thirty days. You can sort by um, clicks, mm -hmm. or or yeah, sort by clicks or most saved. Um, you can also switch over from pins from your domain, which is where we are now, to pins that you saved or so like pinned by me. See that at the top left, right next to pins from blog.tailwindapp.com. We have pinned by me. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Top, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is what you have pinned. It could be from any site, which is, it's really cool to see, okay, which pins from everyone are getting the most clicks. Um, yeah. So how come you're not seeing that? Oh, can you, can you uh, scroll over to the right a little bit? Uh, okay. There we go. Oh, there you go. Okay. So click rate, I find fascinating right so so i would want to look at which pins are getting the highest click rate right and then see if i can figure out why like can i make some pins that look like that so, <laughs> what's the save, so explain what the difference between the save rate and the click rate is okay so a save is like a repin okay Right, so that that pin 0.1% save rate, but what I like, what I really care about ultimately is the click rate. Save right. rate is awesome, right, because it spreads around and builds on your click rate, builds on that. But click rate, out, especially out of the gate, like I want to see what is making people click because I want the traffic. So does every tailwind? Uh, we're getting some questions. Um, okay. Because uh, Bobette says uh, this is awesome. I am in love. I've been manually computing <laughs> click rates and save rates. Oh uh, no! But then some other people are saying. Um, <laughs> I, they can't find it. They don't see the earth pin at all. It's actually, it's underneath your insights. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's where top, oops, I just clicked off of it. Um, let me go back. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Top pins. So, um, but that's where you can find it at. It's under, it's underneath insights and it's top pins is right above organic activity. I know it's hard to see on this little screen on Facebook, um, yeah. but that's where you can find it. And does every account have this or is it rolling out? Yep, every account should have this. Okay, so if you so don't have it, it what you could do is maybe log out and log back in and see if that might help uh, or refresh or something like that. So um, It should be there. I didn't have to log out, but yeah. Yeah, I, I had it when as soon as Elisa said it was active for me as well. So mm -hmm. very cool. So this is I awesome. I love this. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited about and this. And so the furthest you can go back is 30 days, correct? Yep. Okay. Very cool. Yep. But I um, mean, it's just nice to have a place to go and see what's bringing in my, my clicks and how can I make more just like that? <laughs> exactly. So that's what I was going to say. I wanted to bring yeah. that up is, um, so with that information, the, mm. the thing you would do is like, okay, these are my top pins. This is what's getting clicked. This is what's driving me traffic. Mm -hmm. I need to make more and start seeing and seeding those out and seeing, you know, if I can optimize some of maybe it's, yeah. you know, it may kind of be falling off a little bit. And it's time to yeah, refresh it and I think because we're kind of in SEO mode and keyword mode, like what are the keywords on those pins? 
right? And then if you want to look at like where did what board did I save it to? So like try try to teach yourself like how how that consistency works. Like okay, this pin with this keyword worked well on this board because I'm seeing the consistency in the keywords across them. Oh, gotcha. thanks, Bobette. Yeah, and Mama I'm Jill's glad we can save you that. On, on YouTube says, "Wow, I'm so in love with Tailwind. It totally changed my life." <laughs> That is Yay. awesome. And yet everyone's saying, trying to find out it's under the graph bar section. It kind of, is, it's not the, really the world, um, but. Uh, <laughs> right, it's right under the world. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a, it, it, you kind of have to look for it, but it's right there, it's right under there. Um, man, it's a powerful tool. So this is mm -hmm. a great question by uh, Alexa. She goes, what would be a great, what would it be a good click rate be? So in the world of Pinterest promoted pins, a good click through rate before one tap. So let's just forget that before one tap was um, 0.2 to 0.3%. So anything around there is like um, across the board good, but I would, I would spend more time looking at your average rather than comparing because it's going to be different gotcha. for everybody. So I do want to bring up uh, some more questions. This is from, yeah, uh, please. Uh, Jenny, she asked this, she goes, um, should we, so if we see on our click rate stuff's not performing, should we delete non-performing pins? No, no. And you're like, you're not going to see non-performing pins on that report because it's your top pin report anyway. But um, no, you shouldn't because the thing is Pinterest, yes, they're looking for engagement to, to determine how to, how much and where to distribute your pins. But what they're looking for is engagement with your followers. And that happens pretty quickly after your pin goes out. So if you've had time to figure out that this pin is not performing, it's too late. Like Pinterest has already said, oh, okay, her followers didn't really resonate with this. They're not engaging. So we're not gonna distribute it that much. Like by the time you know they didn't, Pinterest already knows they didn't. <laughs> so, right. so there's no use, it's, it's a waste of time. And weird things happen. Like somebody could pin it to just the right board and have just the right person see it, it and it can, can take off. Yeah, and if you delete it, you've, you're not gonna have that opportunity. Right. Um, this is a great question from uh, Natalie. She goes, can this also, info also be found in Pinterest analytics or is it different? Yeah. So some of it is very similar, right? Like you can see the total clicks, you can see saves, but I don't think the click through or save rate, because Bobette said she was doing it manually, that's not there. So the rates are really interesting. The other thing is like we had that hover over the pin and you could see all the detail about when the pin was created, whether it was a repin and all like the title and description without having to go anywhere. Um, so it's just kind of like easier all in one place and no spreadsheets needed. Gotcha. Well, before we get to the part where everybody has been waiting for with Justine. I'm I know, like they're, they're like, get rid of you guys. Yeah, get, a, get that let's, let's hairy guy out of there. We want to see some pins <laughs> and get some reviews. But I want to I want to bring up some questions we had when we were talking about the keywords because it's all about keywords yeah. today. So I want to yes. bring up some of this. Um, um, this is one, another one from Toto. He goes, um, let's see here. He goes, practical questions. How many key phrases should we use? Where in the description? Um, so we've already talked about oh, hashtags, but... Okay. How many and where? Where else can we find key phrases besides the search bar? Okay. So how many key phrases shall we use? I would stick to, it's probably only going to sound natural if you use like one or two per pin, but you can definitely try different versions on different pins, um, especially if it's a different image. Where in the description? I mean, it depends. Like for awareness, you want to use your brand near the beginning of the description. Mm -hmm. Um and you really want to make it motivating. So it probably makes sense to have it near the beginning of the description, but as long as it's in the description and in the title, you're, you're good. Gotcha. Um, hashtags, how many and where one to two hashtags in the description, where else can we find key phrases besides search bar? So there's search bar, there's guided search, there's, um, trends. the, uh, there's trends, uh, especially if you search that, like start entering, there's that autofill and then there will be related, um, keywords if you click enter and then there's that ads tool so the targeting the targeting screen and the ads tool yeah awesome so here's a, a great question we were talking about the keto and Atkins you know using trends together Jenny goes I feel like I'm missing a step here you say talk about keto or Atkins based on what's trending how do you mean hashtags pin titles body of the pin all so 
That's oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So, so yeah, basically all. So if you have a recipe, like you, ha- you talked about a chicken example. So let's say it's like chicken a la king. Um, do you want to talk about it being keto friendly or do you want to talk about it being Atkins friendly? So like in the text on your image, in the hashtag, pin titles, description, the board you save it to. Um, if you know that, okay, Atkins is Tre- like really trending right now and I want to take advantage of that especially because I know there's not as much competition I'm going to I'm going to create some new pins and I'm going to really focus in on Atkins everywhere in that pin gotcha and this is a great question from Nava she goes uh, ranking for video is much easier but it doesn't translate easily into clicks does ranking for a keyword with a video make it harder for your regular pins to rank for the same keywords so I think the question here is like if if Pinterest returns your results for a keyword, are they only going to pick one and not another? I, I don't know of any mechanism that would limit your exposure in the search results to just one pin over another. Um, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, we actually have some pins running right now. Like Justine made some video pins for us that we're running as promoted pins that have amazing click-through rates. So we're talking like higher than a lot of our our, um, our static pins, which is was frankly a little surprising to me. Right. Uh, but I wouldn't worry about video pins like cannibalizing your clicks somehow um, because they they are getting a ton of impressions. Yeah. That's what I, that's my take. What do you think? I think so too. I, I haven't seen. I mean, are they still? And I haven't checked for a while. Are they still? When you do search, are they still pulling up video at the top? Like they used to? Uh, I did see, like on mobile, yeah, that's okay. what I'm seeing. Okay. Maybe so, not for so everybody, but yeah. You got to figure that into, you know, trying to, to hit some of those spots where they're coming up mm-hmm. and you're seeing where they're pulling those top ones in. So it's a different animal, but I think you're right. I don't think it's cannibalizing or taking away from something. But, now, uh, I'm finally seeing some of those interesting reactions. I haven't um, seen those yet. But they're they're kind of weird. Like I'm, I saw one that was like a an orangey square i don't know what that, what means. that means what reaction that <laughs> yeah. was, we don't know so. i don't i don't know i'm feeling square about it i don't <laughs> know <laughs> and here's another one because i thought it's a great one and then we'll jump into the the pin review with uh, justine uh she uh, now goes is it helpful to add keywords at the end of your description between lines i.e vegan food plant-based etc to make sure you get in more keywords that you couldn't fit into the description in a natural way fit them in in a natural way i promise you you can do it you have what five hundred characters? You can do it, and if you can't do it in one pin, make another one and and right. put the other ones in the other pin. Don't make it look like like a robot made it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, good points. All right, so this is the moment we've all been waiting for. We're going to bring on our uh, incredible Tailwind designer Justine, and there she is. <laughs> make sure you unmute, Justine. Uh, We're so excited to have you here hey, with Justine. us today. So, what are you going to be talking about? Um, So I'm going to be reviewing a TPT, which is Teachers Pay Teachers Pin, Um, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about color theory. Okay. So let's bring on this first pin and get you started. So this is a a pin you found, and... uh, This this was a submission. Okay, it's a submission. Okay, so Mm -hmm. let's talk about this. Uh, What's going on in this pin? There's a lot. There's, yes, there is a lot going on uh, in this pin, and that's kind of the first question that I have for you guys if you want to answer, or it could be rhetorical either way, but um, when you look at this pin, where are your eyes drawn? Um, I don't know if you either of you want to answer So that, mine, when I first went I'll to go. it, it goes to the center, kind of the center left. It's where the red mm-hmm. is. The red makes me go there, uh, first of all, when I first glanced at it. And I kind of go to the logo because the arrow is kind of pointing me there and the little multicolors kind of stand out to me. So yeah, Lisa's wrong once again, but we'll look. I'm always wrong, but I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> no, that's, that, I mean, there's a lot happening. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Right. Yes. And I think that's kind of the point that I wanted to make is um, we don't really know where to look first or there's not like an obvious starting point for the pin. Um and that, I mean, this is a perfect pin to redo because we want to make sure that we're pulling out the information that we want um, the viewer to see when they first land on this pin. Um, and then the other bit of uh, 
like the other thing I want to touch on, which Jeff, you had mentioned is the color. Mm -hmm. Um, so color can be really, really powerful when we're designing. Um, and it's a little bit of a combination thing about color theory is a bit of art and science mixed. Um, so I don't know if we want to go to, Oh, another thing I wanted to call out on this pin was, um, that the, the subtle branding at the bottom is really good. Like I, I really love that logo. I think it's great. Um, but I think if we just sort of clean this up, make it clear to understand and uh, know where to kind of draw the attention and bringing that um, to the front and center will mm -hmm. like dramatically improve the pin. So we can go to the next okay. slide. I just want to say this next one is pretty awesome. I don't want to, don't want to build you up too much, Justine, but it is, <laughs> it is pretty cool. So here's, here's what Justine came up with. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Can you describe that for our listening audience? So, do you want me to? I did yeah, already. It's ahead. wow. That's all they needed. To it's know. wow. No. Justine, explain what you did here on this pin. So it was it was the pin before for you guys who are listening on the podcast. Very very busy. Lots and lots and lots of elements. It almost looked like my desktop. It's pretty cluttered. There's stuff. I have a cone of cleanliness that nobody can see me on camera. It just looks really natural. But um, it's like a, it was like a busy desktop. Things seem to be stacked on top of each other. Papers were kind of scattered, and now it's super clean. There's one thing on the page and a really nice title that's really has really good contrast and she's still incorporating the logo up uh, i think it looks like, like it's the, even the same size that it was before it's a little subtle branding now at the bottom yes yeah um so what i wanted to do with this pin was first and foremost pull out what is what are we trying to communicate with the audience and that this is a persuasive speech unit mm -hmm. so i actually clicked through to see and it was going to the teachers pay teachers site and it was um it was a speech unit, like I said, with lectures, PowerPoints, and more, which I think we saw on the previous slide, but sometimes um, less is more. And in this case, um, we can still show what the actual person will be getting if they buy the speech unit, but we don't have to show them all the context of what they'd be receiving uh, because we want them to click and see for themselves as well, which kind of goes back to what we talked about last week, which is that we want to leave a little bit of mystery um, and we just, the goal is to get people to click. The other thing that I pulled out here was that this is for grades eight to 11. I thought that was a little bit of extra context that we could add to the pin that may have been missing before, especially if you're thinking, okay, this is an interesting topic for me, but I teach seventh grade or sixth grade or something. Um, so that's just like a, a little bit of extra context that I felt could be added to the pin that might entice someone to click. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is sort of the color theory um, behind maybe why we should use pops of color versus the, the last pin was a little bit darker. It had a lot of sort of darker tones. It had the same sort of burgundy shade that we see here. But what I did was pull out sort of a brighter version of that red. And I want to just pull in a really quick stat because I think it's very, very interesting. So this is from the Institute for Color Research. So research that they had done showed that people make a judgment about a person, environment, or product within 90 seconds of viewing it. And between 62 and 90% of that assessment is based on color alone. So color is very, very important when you're creating anything from maybe you're thinking of branding for your website or um, a pin. So here, when we think of like the color red, you might think of it's a very strong color and we know that because a lot of brands use red mm -hmm. uh, pinterest is a perfect example right. <laughs> um so red can be again like i said very powerful it signifies passion excitement power so like a persuasive speech unit might be a good candidate for using red and um, we're thinking about maybe being passionate when you're persuading um, and it's also just kind of an eye-catching color very cool. Um, and it, yeah, in addition to that, so when we're thinking about picking a color, there are different uh, tints, which would be adding lightness to it. So brighter colors and then shades, which would be adding, uh, a, adding black to the color. So darkening the color. And um, they can do two different things. So lighter is seen as more peaceful, uh, more feminine. Darker is 
kind of more mysterious and more serious, which maybe the last pin we're getting some of that darkness uh, where this pin bringing in that light can really make a difference. So it's more than just about the color. It's also about um, how dark or how light the color is. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I want to ask you a question. So I'm going to pull these up side by side. And so um, there are lots of elements to pick from, from this, from this pin. Mm -hmm. What made you decide on pulling the, the red um, from the center with the kind of the, that looks like the kind of the red title page and then some pages behind it. What made you choose that to highlight on, highlight on and compared to something else? So I picked that, I think because one, it was just prominent on the original pin and I mm -hmm. wanted to pull in what was already created instead of trying to recreate something. Um, and it also stood out to me on the first pin. I know we've got another section with like little bits of color, mm -hmm. um, but I really thought, okay, what if we just took that red and played with it? Especially because Elisa and I, I mean, we've found for us, that sort of pink, uh, brighter color works well on Pinterest, really great at grabbing attention. And I just kind of, you know, it was already there. So let's work with what's already gotcha. there for me. So what made you decide to not use the same font and use that different font over on the, the new redesign? Why didn't you use a scripty okay. font? Trick question. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> and that goes back to what we had talked about on the last Facebook Live, um, which is just that interest needs to be able to read your pin. Um, and then just people need to be able to read your pin too. And generally, <laughs> um, can be difficult to read. And uh, what I've also found is just we as humans don't really like to read a lot. Um, so simple easy to understand and read and hierarchy really makes a difference. Here's where you go first, second, third. So you don't have to um, decide that yourself. There's less uncertainty. Um, so when you can really direct people with like, here's big, bold font, um, go here first, they don't have to sort of decide between, well, am I going to read this first? Am I going to look at the image first? What, what's the order of sort of operations? Gotcha. Um, so I want to go back and pull this up a little bit bigger. Um, why did you use the little white, little squiggly arrows? Um, Cause that really does, I mean, what was your, what was your kind of design theory or thinking behind that? Yeah. So I've um, seen this used a lot on Pinterest. We use this ourselves occasionally um, and it's just to kind of draw your attention down. So once you you're done sort of reading the top section Maybe you're skipping from, you're reading the headline and looking straight down. Maybe you're getting extra context and reading it, but it's just a way to sort of guide your eye along. And then it also just creates more visual interest. We've got sort of a lot of blocks happening. So it's, you know, rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. The bottom has a little bit of movement, but it's also just a way to create movement and balance as well, because um, on the left of the image, we have sort of fanned out papers. And so we can help balance that by putting something on the right side of the pin as well to create some movement. Gotcha. So would Christine, you I say have a question. what I have one first, you can go though. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. So this is a trick question, Justine. Justine, did you oh, have to print out these worksheets and recreate that image and take new photos in order to make this pin? Uh, great question. And no, I didn't. And you don't <laughs> okay. do either. Um, I am a little bit of, I, I will say like, not really a lazy worker, but let's try and find <laughs> smart, it's smart working. Smart, yeah. smart working. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. So basically with, with this is you can either take a screenshot of um, whatever you're trying to show on your screen, whether it be like, in this case, a PDF or like some PowerPoints, um, and then just add just a subtle drop shadow. And it, it just looks like it's, it's you know, out. more realistic. Yeah. It's popping out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And so, I wanted to bring that out because I, we're, we were talking a lot about creating new content, like new pins for Pinterest. Um, and we mm -hmm. want them to look and to actually be brand new. Right. So this is mm -hmm. completely different from what you had, what was before, but it 
didn't require a whole new photo shoot. So this is like, this is doable. That's a great point. Yes. Yeah. So my question was, would it be too, too over the top? So we'd go back to that squiggly little arrow pointing and drawing your idea down to your eyes down the page to have that go to a click, like a call to action button. Or is that like too much? Like if you would have like a button that would say, you know, click here to learn more or something, would you draw an arrow to it? Or is that like, okay, we know what you're doing there. Quit trying to trick me, marketer. <laughs> hmm. I would try it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think. She's a marketer, but I want to know what a designer yeah. is. <laughs> I think Justine no is one of those design. rare designer hybrids. <laughs> um, I will, I, I think, you know, a B testing and trying new things is always a great thing. And if you want to use an arrow to call it out, I think typically I will just use like a button for a CTA mm -hmm. and that tends to give enough contrast and people understand like, Oh, this is a call to action. Um, let me click here. So test it. You could do both. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I've What's seen some interesting time? CTAs where they have like a, a wide arrow that that's like, to the right. edge of the pin that's oh, like yeah. visit now yes. and it's like making the arrow part of the cta which i kind of like yeah that's you cool. could also try an animation too which could be interesting of just mm -hmm. like a subtle movement of something or maybe an arrow sort of jumping up and down we see that like on instagram stories too so trying mm -hmm. some of like the instagram story animations and incorporating them into a pin could be interesting mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, with the time I have left, I want to bring up some uh, a couple questions for Justine. Um, one is from Jenna. She has mm -hmm. this question. She goes, well, what if your brand's colors are lighter and more pastel-like? Yeah, so even if your brand colors are lighter, you can still, um, there are lots of tools online for finding different shades, so darker tones within that kind of color palette, I would encourage you to expand the color palette so you're not locked into, okay, every time I have to do this one specific color. Um, so you can go lighter with it, you can go darker with it. And I, I think it's it's just important, like try things, you have more freedom, you're not just locked into like one specific color. We try things at Tailwind all the time. Um, and don't feel like you have to just use one color for every single pin. Uh, you don't, you can, you know, test different colors, um, pull colors from an image if you have a really great image for like a blog post, um, and then matching the subject matter with your pin. So maybe if your, your subject matter is something more serious, you might try a darker pin because that's associated with something that is maybe a little bit more serious. Um, and then if you're talking about maybe you have like for teachers pay teachers, maybe you're you have like kindergarten lessons plans. Well, that might be like a bright color, um, like a bright blue or a few different bright colors. We see that a lot with TPT is a lot of bright colors. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things and I'll, I'll end on this one, uh, Jessica goes, uh, in education community, many pins look like this. And that was from the first one, mm -hmm. that you should, the cluttered yes. one. Um, so they yes. do have that, that look. And I would just like you to talk a little bit, just uh, maybe a minute or so of, one of the reasons this red would probably work is because it would stand out. And sometimes mm -hmm. you want to stand out a little bit. So it pops. You don't want to look like hideous and stand out. You want to be, you know, looking nice and, and stand out with something new that maybe catch people's eye. Yes. Yeah. I mean, just definitely agree with that. Okay. Um, you can try both if you'd like, because sometimes, I mean, we, we're surprised by things, but I right. think, yeah. uh, <laughs> the, the general approach or rule that I take is sort of the cleaner, the clearer, the better, because if it's easy for me to sort of step back and understand it, then someone else would probably have a similar opinion. Um, but if you create something, I always like giving this advice because I use this myself. Um, whenever I design something, I'll just step back from my computer, like a foot or two, mm. um, and see what stands out on that pin. And if, I don't know what's going on in the pin. The odds are that, you know, other people are probably not going to know either. Yeah. Oh, that's my favorite tail and tip of the day. Yeah. And always, I mean, Justine, it's awesome. We're going to have you back again because we get so much out of this. We love your yeah. redesigns. Everybody is talking about it in the comments. So we really appreciate it. But we want to make sure you guys, if you like these designs, well, guess who helped create some of these designs at uh, 
this uh, Pinterest tools kit. I'm pretty sure Justine did a little uh, work on these. At least uh, you did could, a lot, actually. Yeah, I figured you did. So <laughs> I, I, you can go get some of her not. designs <laughs> at bit.ly forward slash TW Pinterest toolkit. That's all lowercase, all smashed together. That's bit.ly forward slash TW Pinterest toolkit. Go there, download that. New stuff's coming out all the time um, and see what Justine is cooking up for you guys uh, with these templates. And with that, we thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all your comments and your questions and everything that went on today during the show. We will be back in two weeks. Uh, and you know, let us know what you'd like us to talk about. Do you want some more demos? Do you want Justine on to do some more talking about color theory? We want to know what you guys want because we want to bring that to you. And with that, I'll let Elisa have the last word. Oh, man. You know, you do this every week and you'd you think I'd be prepared it, once. Yeah. Just once. I know. But thank you, Justine. I know um, we got a comment last time you were on and it was like, kisses, Justine. I loved watching you and company. And it was like, you know what? I'm good with and company. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are the best audience ever. So thank you. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye now. <laughs> Bye.